Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another video here on the fellow KGB. Uh, we're doing a uh, best ball draft here on drafters.com. You can find my link to my promo code if you have not checked out drafters.com yet. It's the fellow KGB. Um, I don't know. Let's see. This is my first time trying this website, so I'm excited to, to see how it goes. Uh, I currently have the 10th pick. If you're unfamiliar with best ball, you basically just draft your players and you're not going to touch them the rest of the season. Uh, it'll automatically submit your highest scoring lineup each week for you. So uh, a lot of it is for me, it's just draft prep. I love getting uh, to figure out ADPs and try to design different teams and just get my exposure to a bunch of different players. Um, and then you never have to check out. Uh, you never have to update it week to week. There's no lineup decisions. It just is what it is. And we'll go from there. So uh, I'm excited here. Uh, again, drafters.com. You can use my promo code, the fellow KGB. And uh, you, you, you're going to get 50% off, uh, not 50% off, but you're going to get whatever money you put in for your initial deposit, you're going to get a 50% bonus. So if you put 50 bucks in, you're going to get 25 bucks on top of that. So check it out. It's free money. Have some fun with it. I do a lot of best balls, but I've been waiting to do them this year with what's kind of going on. But um, I'm getting the itch and I found a new website, so I'm going to give it a try. Um, man, and... If you haven't heard the news, Dalvin Cook's threatening to hold out. Um, Adam Schefter dropped that bomb today. And we just see here uh, Dalvin Cook go number four overall, which is a little interesting. I don't know if that guy watches the news, but oh well. Um, I'm trying to just get used to what we're looking at here. Um, so I can see Christian McCaffrey, number one, Saquon Barkley, number two. It looks like Ezekiel Elliott here, number three. Uh, Dalvin Cook, Alvin Kamara, Derrick Henry. So it's all running backs right now at 10. I don't know what I'm going to do. Uh, Devontae Adams is going to be super uh, hard to pass up at 10 if he's there. I do come back here at 15, and we are on the we are on deck. Okay. So Kenyon Drake, man, he's been getting a lot of buzz lately. A lot of people like him. He's in, inching in, into the first round now, and I see that, uh, I don't know, that's going to be a, a good summer for him. He's going to have a lot of hype. And uh, I don't know, the volume is going to be there. He's got an involvement in the passing game, and it's a fun offense to be a part of. He lit it up last year uh, down the stretch, but we just don't know if, if he's going to get the full workload of carries. Like, I mean, I know David Johnson's gone, but Chase Edmonds is still there to snag a couple carries. But anyways, we're up on the, on the board here. Devontae Adams, Tyree Kill, Aaron Jones, uh, DeAndre Hopkins. These are some of the best available guys here. Um, I mean, running backs are going to fall off quickly. Um, so we're going to go ahead here, and we're just going to snag Aaron Jones. Everyone's going running backs. We'll see if someone else can fall to us at the 15 spot. But Aaron Jones, I still have him. If we look here on my projections tab, I've been doing a lot of work on this. And it's just about ready. I'll be updating my rankings soon on thefellowship.com. Uh, but if I filter here by rankings, I got Aaron Jones finishing as an RB7. And this is with... Uh, I mean, I give him big touchdown regression. He's got nine rushing and three receiving. I think that's down from, what did he have, like 18, 19 touchdowns last year. So I'm expecting his, his total opportunity to be about the same. I actually knocked down his opportunity share. He was at 30.89%, and I got him at 296 um, So I have him regressing, and he's still looking like a top 10 running back. So I'm okay with Aaron Jones there. I was hoping Josh Jacobs would come around, but that's okay. Um, but yeah, if you're unfamiliar with opportunity share, it's basically the amount of uh, carries, receptions, and if they make a pass or attempt, but it's the amount of uh, attempts that they're going to get divided by the total amount of touches a team has. So Aaron Jones, essentially, he got 30, almost 31% of the touches last year on that offense. Um, so I, I put that down a little bit this year, and he still ended up as my RB7. So we see Devontae Adams at 11, Josh Jacobs at 12, Nick Chubb 13. And I just want to say thank you. If you're watching this video, please like, comment, subscribe. Let me know uh, where you do your best balls or if you do use drafters.com. Uh, so we see Julio Jones go here, and I'm back up to pick. Uh, the running backs are really, really hit hard here. Austin Eckler is the best available. Miles Sanders is kind of fun for a best ball. Um, but I'm going to go ahead here and just grab my receiver. We're going to build a well-balanced team. I'm going to go with Tyree Kill. He is my number three receiver in uh, my redraft rankings right now. Um, so we'll go ahead and select Tyree Kill. And then we're going to let this run for a little bit, but let's, let's take a look at Tyree Kill's numbers. 
Um, so I think he missed like a handful. I, don't, I can't remember how many games he missed last year, but um, the man ended up with about 860 yards, seven touchdowns, 58 receptions on 89 targets. Uh, let's just quick take a look here at FF today. Man, I'm so excited to be doing uh, live best balls. Uh, I know a lot of best ball sites, they have the slow drafts, which are fine, but I like doing the ones that are kind of bing bang, you know, you get them done really quickly. So uh, we see Tyreek Hill was wide receiver 32 last year in 12 games. I think that's more like 10 games. He got hurt week one, and then he did, like he started the game, but he couldn't finish in the first quarter. So he basically finished wide receiver 32 in just 10 games. And then as far as best ball concerns, like you see these 24s, 23, 33, 26, 25. These are the numbers you want in best ball format. You want guys that are going to have high ceilings. And because, because it's best ball and we don't have to worry about starting our lineup, it, this is the type of league where it's okay to draft guys that are more boom bust and consistent. Um, so a guy like Tyree Kill, man, he is, he is to me one of the, he's the best, best ball receiver you could have. Um, cause there are some games where he doesn't, uh, excite us very much, but his booms are so high that it's worth it. So, um, yeah, we're looking at Aaron Jones and Tyree Kill to start. Um, I'm just trying to kind of get my bearings here and figure out where, where else I can be looking at. Uh, I was kind of hoping for, there we go. There's so they do have like a draft board here and we'll move that up a little bit. So I'm filling up my roster. It looks like. Looks like we got like 18 to 20 spots to pick. Um, so we're moving along here. After Tyreek Hill, we see Lamar Jackson, first QB off the board. Uh, Austin Eckler, Miles Sanders, Clyde Edwards, Alaire. So lots of running backs, guys. If you're looking at this, we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 running backs in the first 19 picks. Um, so that's kind of where everyone's going. And I'm like notorious for zigging when people zag. So I don't mind. Uh, doing a balanced start with one running back, one receiver first, especially because Tyree Kill, if we filter to my projections tab, um, let's see where Tyreek finished in PPR. I mean, yeah, I, I told you, I got Tyree Kill as my, my wide receiver three. Um, so I'm pretty optimistic about Tyree Kill. I think he has the opportunity for a career year uh, as long as everything stays healthy. I mean, anything attached to Pat Mahomes is exciting. And I mean, Tyree Kill is exciting in himself. So, um, Tyree Kill round two feels like one of the biggest uh, uh, hits that I love right now. So uh, let's see here. After Clyde Edwards at 19, we got DeAndre Hopkins. That's kind of late for DeAndre Hopkins typically, but uh, we see Travis Kelsey, Chris Godwin, George Kittle. So the tight ends are starting to go uh, end of round two. So that's where you're going to have to look or if you want one of those guys. Uh, it looks like Leonard Fournette, Kenny Galladay, Mike Evans. Um, so pretty status quo so far. I'm surprised Pat Mahomes hasn't gone yet. I know people love to wait on quarterbacks. Um, but you can see here we're starting one quarterback, two running backs, three receivers, and one tight end. I'm not sure how many flex players. Looks like just one flex. So we got one, two, three, four, five. Uh, looks like eight starters on, on this team. And then, yeah, the, the, the scoring is, you know, your typical four-point passing touchdowns and minus two for interceptions. Uh, looks like just a standard PPR league. So, I, I mean, check out draft.com, man. There's a lot of other different leagues. You can even, um, if you wanted to create a league, I saw you could do that. You could um, enter in your own settings and invite people to your draft. If you guys want to do a private, you know, best ball on the side, that sounds like something I might be into at some point. Um, so, anyways, here we're humming along here round three. It looks like Mike Evans. I think that's DJ Moore. Uh, Odell Beckham, Amari Cooper, Pat Mahomes, Todd Gurley, and Adam Thielen. So what uh, what can we find here in our best available? We're going to go back to the slider menu. So we're on deck here. I don't really have anything in mind that I want. Um, obviously, running backs are going to be hard to find the more we go down here. Um, so let's take a look at... Hmm. Keenan Allen, Mark Ingram, A.J. Brown. We're going to go with Juju Smith-Schuster. We're going to smash him in there. And um, I'll tell you why in a sec. We're going to be up to pick shortly. So I'm just kind of scanning for other players of my interest. I like Chris Carson here, Le'Veon Bell, 
Le'Veon Bell's a decent uh, best ball guy because you just don't know when his you know when he's gonna he's gonna hit. But we do know that at some point he's gonna get enough to, touches to do what we want to do. So I'm kind of disappointed that there's not a way to filter. Oh, there we go. So that's how you filter. You just click on these tabs. Um, so I mean we're we're humming along here in starting the fourth round right now, and we got running backs, Mark Ingram, DeAndre Swift, Damian Williams, Chris Carson, Le'Veon Bell, Melvin Gordon's available, James Conner's available. Um, so we see Jonathan Taylor go after me, but on my projections, guys, I have, whew, I'm trying not to be too crazy on the Steelers, but if Juju and Ben and Connor all play together for a full season, Juju's got top 10 upside this year, so I'm super excited about that pick. And Juju's a pretty much a best ball receiver as well as Tyree Kill. You know, he's going to take one to the house every now and then, and, and he'll be consistent enough for redraft leagues. But I'm pretty happy with this start so far. We got – this is pretty best ballsy uh, as far as players hitting and touchdowns and stuff. So uh, we see Jonathan Taylor, Calvin Ridley, Le'Veon Bell go ahead of me. I'm probably looking at running back here. Uh, I do wish Adam Thielen was available, but where did Thielen go? Yeah, Thielen went just ahead of me. I would have been tempted with him. So we see uh, David Johnson go here. I'm thinking about running backs, and I kind of want to get Melvin Gordon off the board. Um, even James Conner, I could I could take two Steelers here and be good with that. Because uh, if Conner if Connor can play a full season, man, he's going to get some touchdowns. Um, so I don't know if I want to spread my myself out, though, with maybe Melvin Gordon here. Chris Carson's super interesting, too, but I think – I think I'm going to go with Melvin Gordon and Melvin Gordon currently on the Denver Broncos. They gave him how much money did they give? They gave him a good size deal. Um, I, I liked, I like uh, Melvin Gordon as an RB two this year. Um, so if we look at Melvin Gordon's contract real quick, he got 16 million for two years. Uh, that's eight million a year. That's a fair. That's a pretty good deal for Melvin Gordon. I think they're going to want to use him as much as they can. And I mean, if we look at Melvin Gordon real quick, I mean he's been on he's been on some productive Chargers teams. Uh, last year he did you know hold out the first four games, but when he came back, uh, we see he was averaging 15.6 points per game. And I mean, just look at this consistency. Uh, I'll take that all day. I know Philip Lindsay's there. And so is Royce Freeman, but Melvin Gordon's going to walk right into the starting role there. And the thing about the Broncos is they have a good defense and they have a young quarterback and they have a team that wants to run the ball. Um, the head coach, uh, what's his name? Uh, Vic Fangio and Pat Shermer. So uh, Pat Shermer was the Giants head coach the last year or two. Um, so now he's coming over to call the plays. Vic, Vic Fangio is a very defensive heavy mind. Um, so if I look real quick at what Vic, um, if we look real quick here at what Pat Shermer did, uh, the last two years with with the with the Giants, he did you know he I mean he had Saquon Barkley, so this is a little bit different, but um, he's able to get double digit rushing touchdowns and run for about 4.7 yards per carry. And the Giants were not a good team. The Broncos are a much better team than the Giants. So uh, I, I I get that Philip Lindsay's there, but in a best ball situation, I mean Melvin Gordon gets touchdowns. I mean, look at what he's done the last four years. And then that's not even receiving stuff, too. So I like Melvin Gordon. He catches the ball. He scores touchdowns. And he, he's, just a good, he's just a good overall stat stuffer. So I'm um, feeling good there. After Melvin Gordon, we see Allen Robinson, James Conner, uh, David Montgomery, A.J. Brown, Keenan Allen, Chris Carson, Mark Ingram, DeAndre Swift, Mark Andrews, Robert Woods, and Cooper Cup. That's interesting back-to-back. -back. I'm a big uh, – I think I'm into Robert Woods more than Cup this year. I think Cup's a wide receiver too with some upside, but Woods feels like he's a, a fringe wide receiver one this year. Um, so I don't know. I'm going to be updating my my rankings and stuff here, but I just basically finished these today, and uh, I got all my tabs and stuff updated here. So now you can filter uh, by these, but I'm going to have to update them to the site so you guys can click and, and view that stuff there. But uh, currently, if we go to thefellowship.com, you can find the rankings, the redraft rankings tab here. I'm going to input the, the PPR, the half PPR, and the standard for those that are playing on different uh, things than PPR. Uh, but everything's going to be basically on this, this tab here, so you can check that out. I might even add the numbers of projections that I'm putting in there. 
Um, yeah, working on a lot of stuff. I've been super busy, super busy putting out content. I had a good day yesterday putting out some videos. Uh, I'm thinking about recording my NFC North stuff today, tonight after this. So we'll see how that goes. But yeah, overall here, we're looking, we're looking pretty good, pretty solid balance start here. I'm just trying to confirm here. We're going to go 18 rounds today. So I appreciate you hanging out. If you're, if you're still watching, like comment the video, leave a, leave us a message with the uh, guys that you're interested in for best ball leagues. Or if you disagreed with one of my picks, let me know. I love con you know, just a conversation about it. Like I, with Melvin Gordon pick, I could have taken Allen Robinson, James Connor. I mean, I'm still into to guys uh, at the receiver position here. So, but we're starting with Aaron Jones and Melvin Gordon, two, two pretty good running backs. And then Tyreek and Juju, these guys are all pretty, I mean, they're elite players at their position. So uh, I'm feeling pretty good here. If we look at where I got Melvin Gordon ranked, I feel a little bit low. Um, and that's because I baked in a little bit of Philip Lindsay hype, but I did give Melvin Gordon up to RB20, but this kind of feels like his floor guys. Uh, I'm not sure how the Broncos are gonna break down their, their carries and, and the amount of snaps this year but I did give Melvin Gordon about 210 touches <clears throat> on the ground plus 41 in the, in the air. So he's got basically 250 touches coming his way. So I'm into volume. If you see his opportunity share is going to be about 27% uh, and he's going to be a good portion of the yards. So uh, we're coming up here on our fifth round pick. So let's do a little scouting. If you're interested in looking at quarterback, Kyler Murray, Russell Wilson, Tom Brady, Deshaun Watson, Dak Prescott. Uh, I'm feeling pretty good about weighing on quarterback. Although, I mean, there's tons of good ones available, so I think we can wait. I'm um, looking at the running backs here. A guy like Kareem Hunt could be fun. I mean, even if we, we handcuffed a guy like uh, Philip Lindsay to our, to our guy, Melvin Gordon, that wouldn't be a bad idea. Um, I'm just keep looking around here. Darren Waller makes sense. Um, any running backs here that really stick out to me? I mean, I like Raheem Mostert. I like Kareem Hunt. Um, but I think we're going to take a stab here at receivers. We're going to go DK Metcalf. And DK Metcalf, man, he talk about a best baller, um, DK Metcalf. I'm, I'm excited to get a piece of uh, the passing game in Seattle. It's either Lockett or DK Metcalf. And if we quick look here at what DK was doing in PPR leagues last year, I mean, you know, he, he can hit, you know, easily about 10 to 12, 13 points on a consistent basis, but you want some of these boom games. You see the Philadelphia playoff game, the 20 points against San Fran, 25 against Tampa Bay. That's kind of what we're going for. So, I mean, to get hit, or to get DK Metcalf as my wide receiver three, that sounds pretty good to me. We start three receivers and we can start one flex. So uh, I still have one more starting roster spot to fill. So with this pick, I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of liking going receiver again here. I'm a big fan of Michael Gallup. Uh, I think Gallup might be the guy here. I mean, I was hoping Kareem Hunt would fall, but we missed out on Kareem Hunt. But then there's guys like J.K. Dobbins, uh, Tariq Cohen, Devonta Freeman, still got to get signed. Um, Alexander Madison, man, this news with Dalvin Cook is wild. If Madison's there on the way back, we might have to take a look at him. But I think right here we're going to go with Michael Gallup, uh, wide receiver Dallas Cowboys. And Michael Gallup last year, basically on a points per point basis, he was just as good as Amari Cooper. Amari Cooper got more receptions and he played a little bit more games. Uh, but if we look here, Amari Cooper, 16 games, he had almost 80 receptions, almost 1,200 yards and eight touchdowns for about 15.4 points per game. But if you look at what Michael Gallup did, I mean, he's getting – in 14 games, Michael Gallup gets 66 receptions, 1,100 yards, and six touchdowns, and he gets 15.2 points per game. So I'm, I'm into Michael Gallup here. I know people are nervous about C.D. Lamb being there and target distribution and whatnot, but, I mean, if the Cowboys are throwing the ball 600 times, I mean, they threw it, what, 596 last year? If they're throwing the ball 600 times, there's enough uh, targets to go around for Cooper, Gallup, and C.D. Lamb to all eat. So... Uh, and I'm getting Gallup as my flex starter. He's my fourth receiver. So I, I like that. And I'm also investing in a really good heavy passing attack. So um, that's kind of the thing here. So we got, to, I'm really liking this, this layout here. Um, so now we're set up to start taking some darts on running backs, maybe PPR backs like a, like a Duke Johnson or who else could we maybe get here? I'm still into JK Dobbins. He's on the list. A guy like Ronald Jones is interesting. We don't know what's going to go on with the rookie. 
uh, uh, Keyshawn Vaughn, uh, a guy like Alexander Madison down here. Um, but yeah, so the, 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 the Vikings, man. Uh, Dalvin Cook's holding out. What do we think about this? Dalvin Cook, is he going to get paid or is he going to do a Le'Veon Bell and skip the season? I mean, if we look here, he domin- like, Dalvin Cook dominated last year with touchdowns, receptions, everything. But it was, he didn't even play a full 16-game season. Um, he hasn't his whole career. So it's a little bit baffling to me that if, if Melvin Gordon couldn't get what he wanted last year, it's a little, a little bit crazy to me that Dalvin Cook's going to try to do it. Uh, especially with the Vikings having a quality backup in Alexander Madison. So it's a little weird for me, but uh, I don't know. Let's, let's recap here. It looks like Damian Williams, uh, round six. looks like Debo Samuel, Jarvis Landry, Cam Akers, Darren Waller. You get Marquise Brown. I could have went with Marquise Brown. He's probably a, a good best ball pick too uh, compared to Gallup. I like both those guys a lot. I just like um, – I don't know. I just like Dak Prescott. Uh, I, I love Lamar. Lamar Jackson, but um, I think Gallup can be a little bit more consistent than Marquise. Um, so it looks like J.K. Dobbins went here, Marlon Mack, Tyler Boyd. Um, <clears throat> so again, we have basically our starting lineup filled out. We need a quarterback and a tight end, but the core of our team is loaded at receiver, Aaron Jones, Melvin Gordon. Um, so some running backs that interest me, James White, Tariq Cohen, those two for sure in a PPR best ball league. I like that. Uh, Alexander Madison, Duke Johnson can kind of sneak in and do some things. Um, I like Boston Scott, Carlos Hyde, maybe Naheem Hines. So there's, to me, there's plenty of running backs in a PPR setting. Uh, but yeah, we are banking on guys like Aaron Jones and Melvin Gordon staying healthy for us this year. Um, I might even, uh, because I took Aaron Jones with my last pick, I might be looking at a guy like AJ Dillon, who I have projected for like five or six touchdowns this year. I mean, the Packers taking a running back round two. That says a lot to me. I know Jones and Jamal Williams both are in a contract year, so there's potential one of those guys, if not both, are gone next year. So they're kind of it's a it's a future pick, but I mean they're just not going to use their second round pick running back this year. So I would expect uh, AJ Dillon to get some run near the goal line this year. So he might be a guy that I put late on my list, my target list. Um, as far as tight ends, Austin Hooper, Hunter Henry. Evan Ingram, Hayden Hurst, Jared Cook, Tyler Higby. I mean, at this point in the draft, tight ends just go forever. I mean, I could wait till John o. Smith, Blake Jarwin, Dallas Goddard, TJ Hawkinson, Ian Thomas. You see what I mean? Like, they just they just keep going. So um, I don't know. I'm I'm feeling pretty good about this start right now. Let's take a look at quarterbacks. Um, who are you guys targeting in your best ball quarterbacks? Uh, I think Josh Allen's fun. Aaron Rodgers is a good quarterback for best ball. Uh, Drew Brees, man, Matt Ryan. Look at all these. Deshaun Watson's still lingering in the seventh. Daniel Jones is a best baller. Joe Burrow, Matt Stafford down here. I'm into Matt Stafford. So I don't know. I think what we're going to do is we're going to keep waiting on some of these, uh, these guys and we're going to start looking at receiver and running back. We're going to continue looking at receiver and running back. Um, a guy like Darius Slayton's a perfect best ball target. If you don't know what Darius Slayton did last year, let's take a look at him. Uh, and the way I do, I just Google a player's name and add FF today, and it'll bring you to the link of their, their stats. Uh, but basically in 14 games last year, Darius Slayton um, scored about 12 points per game. And he hit some double digits, but you, you're looking at these 32s and 34s that get me excited. Um, so we see this as a quarterback round. Kyler Murray, Dak Prescott, Russell Wilson, uh, Deshaun Watson, Drew Brees. So a lot of quarterbacks are starting to fly off the board here. Uh, Tom Brady, Josh Allen, and Aaron Rodgers are still on the board. So maybe we, we wait and we see if one comes around here. I do like Tariq Cohen a lot here. And, I mean, whew, Marvin Jones, though, holy crap. Um, Okay, we're going to go ahead and take Marvin Jones. And this is, this is basically, if you didn't watch my, my best uh, or my mock draft that I just posted the other day, uh, this is pretty similar to what I just did with my best ball or my mock draft. Um, taking a guy like Marvin Jones is super intriguing to me. <clears throat> if we look at what Marvin Jones did last year, um, I mean, keep in mind Mar- uh, Matt Stafford missed half the year, and you're looking at Marvin Jones Jr., 
where did he finish? He finished as wide receiver 28 last year, and this is with half a year of Stafford. So uh, everything to me is going to be a hit with, with Marvin Jones at his current ADP. Uh, I mean, round seven, we're stealing. So like we're super loaded here at wide receiver. We're going to be able to, to keep chucking in uh, a lot of points at that position. So I'm super stoked there. Tight ends, I'm still not ready to buy Hooper, Henry, Evan Ingram yet. Um, but maybe we pull a quarterback here. I'm kind of into Aaron Rodgers here. And again, from a best ball perspective, but man, there's so much depth here. Like a guy like Ben Roethlisberger, Jared Goff. Are there any running backs here? We're going to take Tariq Cohen at running back. And Tariq Cohen is one of my favorite. He's one of my favorite PPR backs, but he's also uh, probably one of the best options at a late round running back for best ball leagues. Uh, we see Tariq Cohen down here at RB27 last year. He's played a full 16 games. The dude's been able to stay healthy for such a little guy. He's, he's super well built. Um, so adding a running back like this has me excited. If you look at his numbers here, um, this, this, this would be super frustrating to start on a week-to-week -week basis. But if we count the double-digit uh, scoring games, he has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So half of his games, he was above double digits. Uh, it looks like two games, he's right at about nine. So I'm going to be able to use Tariq Cohen in my RB2 or my flex spot more than half the games next year. So um, I like him as – I definitely like him as a, a, as a running back three, four uh, in redraft. But in a best ball league, I think I'm pretty happy with that. I was looking at a guy like James White, um, and I was interested in quarterback. But we're going to continue to wait on running back. A guy like Ronald Jones, like – I get it. The fact that um, the fact that Delvin Cook is holding out here, though, with Alexander Madison, gets me super super excited. And if Madison's there in the next round, I think we're going to take him. But I was talking about Ronald Jones before my mind moved, and now we're looking at uh, last year's stats for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. You see Ronald Jones here with 172 carries, 724 yards, <clears throat> six touchdowns. And then Peyton Barber, they gave 154 carries, 470 yards, and six touchdowns. Now, I'm just – I'm not convinced that we're going to see Bruce Arians give his rookie running back a boatload of carries uh, and just take over Ronald Jones and his, all of his snaps and his touches. Because, I mean, think about Bruce Arians with the Arizona Cardinals. He had a rookie David Johnson on his team, and he hardly used him. And it's David freaking Johnson, like, before injuries. Um, if we look at David Johnson's rookie year real quick, um, I mean, David Johnson didn't get any run until the end of the year, but I guess when he did, he, he gave him a lot of touches. So I, I just don't think Keyshawn Vaughn's on the same access as a David Johnson. Um, but so maybe this would be his, his full stats for a year. I mean, something like this makes sense to me, but I just, I have a hard time especially with what's going on with the, with the Rona situation and rookies not able to report. I mean, Ronald Jones has been in the offense for, for a year now and everything is just going to be super impacted towards veterans, I think, this year. So I'm, I'm kind of off on a lot of rookies and redraft in best ball leagues. Um, I don't think I took any of those guys yet. Um, but I don't know. Ronald Jones is intriguing, the fact that he's not gone. Um, even Philip Lindsay, I could take my handcuff here to Melvin Gordon and, and grab a running back. Um, but so far, we're through eight rounds. Thank you for checking out the video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, I, I just posted my AFC North team previews last night, so go ahead and check that out. Another thing, too, I don't know how much you guys use Instagram for fantasy football stuff, but I do have an Instagram link uh, somewhere down here along with my Twitter feed. Uh, my Twitter link. So go ahead and check those out if you're into that stuff. I would appreciate the likes and the follows. And I usually follow back, so let me know. But yeah, we're just entering round nine here. We just see Keyshawn Vaughn go ahead of Ronald Jones. I mean, if I look at my, my Tampa Bay projections here, I've got them pretty even. I got Ronald Jones getting 186 and Keyshawn Vaughn getting 165 carries. So I just, I don't, I just don't think Keyshawn Vaughn is going to get all the touches. They're still going to use Ronald Jones. He was a second-round pick. Keyshawn Vaughn's a third-round pick. And maybe this is a message for Ronald Jones to get his, you know, what together. Otherwise, we got this new guy here that's ready to, you know, 
take your job. So I'm, I'm kind of, look at this guy. This is a smart move. He took Keyshawn Vaughn and Ronald Jones. That, that's an idea I haven't had before in a best ball league. That makes perfect sense. Um, wow. That's a, that's a good, that's a good thought right there. We, we were just wrestling with Keyshawn and Ronald Jones and now, and now that guy kind of just solved our, our problem for us, <laughs> essentially. Just take both and you get all of them, um, which might be a winning move. Uh, I'm still looking at Alexander Madison here as a guy that I think I might have to snag. Uh, as far as receivers, I still like Darius Slayton, uh, a guy like Preston Williams here. I do. Uh, I'm looking for uh, Miko Hardman because I want to make sure I get him on my team because I have Tyreek. I want to get another deep ball threat on the Kansas City offense. So we're going we're gonna to go after Miko Hardman. Uh, eventually, we might be able to wait until round 11, but uh, I'm going to pound the table a lot for Miko Hardman in these videos, so, so bear with me. Uh, tight ends here. Uh, it looks like I missed out on Hayden Hurst, Tyler Higby. Uh, that's okay. There's still a lot of tight ends I like down here. We still haven't taken a quarterback. Um, I think I'm going to pull a trigger on Matt Stafford here. Uh, running backs. Philip Lindsay. No, we're just gonna do it. We're just gonna we're just gonna snag Alexander Madison, Dalvin Cook potential holdout. It sounds serious. Uh, we saw Melvin Gordon, you know, hold out for four games last year. So anything can happen. So that's kind of like a luxury pick there. If Dalvin Cook doesn't play, Alexander Madison's probably an RB one, uh, just on volume and touches alone. We know Alexander Madison's a good running back. We saw this last year. So I'm super excited about him. Um, in dynasty leagues, probably the most. But um, so, anyways, let's let's just keep looking here at the tight ends. Do I want to pull any of these tight ends yet? I mean, there's there's still tons of guys that I see value in here. So I'm just going to keep ignoring the tight end position. That's one of my favorite things to do. I mean, you either grab one of the you're either the first to grab a tight end or you're the last to grab a tight end. So I have no problem with that. But I mean, the middle of our team is loaded: running backs and wide receivers galore. So I think I'm going to take my next highest quarterback on my rankings. So if we just take a peek real quick, quarterbacks, quarterback, quarterback. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. But if we search here, I got, I mean, I got Matt Stafford here as my QB eight. So hopefully he didn't get sniped. Um, nope. Okay. We're going to do that. We're going to get, we're going to lock in a top 10 quarterback with Matt Stafford. We're going to pair him with Marvin Jones. And we're just going to quick take a second to gush about Matt Stafford. If you don't, if you don't know, now you're going to know. But Matt Stafford was playing maybe the best football of his career last year before he got hurt. If you look at this, eight games, the man threw for 2,499 yards. You to extrapolate that out for a full season, that's 5,000 yards. And it's technically 4,998, but, you know, and then you extrapolate the touchdowns. A man threw 19 in eight games. That's 38 touchdowns. That's 10 picks. Uh, Matt Stafford, if you look at this, this points per game, he was actually having the second best points per game season of his career. And that was with Kelvin Johnson, you know, back in the day. But just look at these numbers um, here. Let me filter by, I, I filter by ESPN because I just know it's four point passing touchdowns. Um, so just look at, look at these numbers. He had two not so great games, maybe 15 is okay, but um, Matt Stafford's going to give me a handful of 25 plus point games, you know, any, anywhere in the 20 to 30 range seems like a, a typical Matt Stafford line. So, um, so yeah, we got our, 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 our quarterback locked in. I'm interested in a couple, we might add two more quarterbacks. We're pretty much set at the running at the receiver position. Uh, we're five deep there with Tyree kill Juju Smith Schuster DK Metcalf, Michael Gallup, and Marvin Jones. So I'm pretty happy there. I mean, running backs, oh, if, if Alexander Madison hits and Dalvin Cook is in a holdout situation, we're going to have uh, – this is going to be a win here. So, I mean, just people – I'm paying – I paid a dollar ten for this league, um, so which isn't, isn't a lot of money. If Even if you have $10 and you want to gamble on it, um, use my promo code uh, down in the box below, the fellow KGB. Uh, head yourself to drafters.com, and if you put 10 bucks in, you're going to get free five bucks. It's a 50% deposit match, um, and you can just play a bunch of one dollar leagues. It's uh, to me this is this is what I do for fun. I, I love I love drafting. I love talking fantasy football. So uh, I, I want to help people 
I want to help people. I want to talk and uh, win some championships. So uh, that's what the, the Fantasy Fellowship is all about. And uh, that's what I'm going to do. So uh, we're seeing a lot of tight ends go here. You're starting to see uh, the pink tight end color start to populate back here. There's still a lot of guys that I like um, at the tight end position. But, I mean, there's really – this this year just feels so deep um, compared to most years where I could get – I mean, I could get – a, a tandem of Blake Jarwin, Dallas Goddard, or I can even wait. And I'm kind of into Herb Smith, Herb Smith Jr. If we just pull up the tight ends from last year here, let's take a look. This, this sun is killing me. Um, but uh, the Vikings tight end, they're going to run a two tight end set. Uh, we see Kyle Rudolph here was, was tight end 16. Herb Smith is down a little bit at tight end 33, but – I think there's a chance he overtakes um, Kyle Rudolph this year. So if we see here, he only got two games of over double digits. Um, but again, it's really hard for a rookie tight end to hit. He did score a couple touchdowns. Uh, I like this as, as a good floor for him to jump off of. I could see him averaging seven to eight fantasy points per game. Um, so, I mean, I got like Herb Smith with like your last pick as tight end. I mean, he's probably going to have four or five games of double digit um, fantasy points so I'm not like super high on them but that's what best balls are for um, you're, you're trying to just get a guy with your last pick that can get five to six double digit point games and maybe crack your starting lineup in those games so um, I don't know best ball is fun because it really challenges um, the way you think I'm gonna quick uh, shut the blinds All right, that's, uh, that's much better. So uh, we're chilling here in the 11th round. Uh, Anthony Miller, that's a good receiver to go. Daniel Jones, Baker Mayfield. We see Johnny Smith, Alshon Jeffrey, Darius Slayton. I mean, these are all – I like all these guys quite a bit. I, <clears throat> I was a big fan of, of Darius Slayton. We would have thought about him if he got to us. Um, but looking at the quarterbacks here, I, I still think, man, there's – I mean, we could wait and, and grab Sam Darnold and Drew Locke or Gardner Minshew, even Philip Rivers, Derek Carr. So we're just going to keep waiting on quarterback. We're going to keep looking at running backs. Uh, a guy like Boston Scott, Naheem Hines, um, Zach Moss. That's Zach Moss and A.J. Dillon. Those are the guys we're waiting for. Um, so my tight end list, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to snag Blake Jarwin here. We're going to just grab two tight ends here, I think, because uh, I like a lot of the positions later. Um, I'll tell you what, we might even look at, this might be a, I'm looking down here, Miko Hargan still sitting here. That's kind of far. I don't know if, Mik I don't think Miko Hardman would get back to me. I wanted Dallas Goddard here. We were going to lock up the tight end position. Um, but like I said, I'm, I'm super excited about that Dallas Cowboy offense. And um, there's enough targets to go around, guys. Uh, Jason Witten was a fringe tight end one last year. Uh, Michael Gallup was a wide receiver too. Mari Cooper was a wide receiver one. And I'm pretty sure Randall Cobb um, flirted with wide receiver three numbers, which is going to be your CD Lamb this year. Uh, if you look at Randall Cobb real quick, wide receiver 42, that sounds like kind of what CD Lamb could be in his rookie year. Um, so I'm a little disappointed I didn't get to draft my guy, Dallas Goddard. Uh, that one stings a little bit. But I mean, looking at these receivers, no one really excites me as much as a guy like Miko Hardman. And so Miko Hardman, a best ball stud. Uh, I don't think he finished anywhere in the top 50 last year. But again, he was, I think he was a third round pick uh, for the Chiefs last year. No, he was a round two, 24th overall in that round. Um, so last year, Miko Hardman, 26 receptions, 41 yards, uh, or 41 targets, 538 yards and six touchdowns for about 7.3 fantasy points per game. But if we look at his best ball, you know, stats here, we see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven games with double digit po uh, fantasy points. So that's what we're looking for. He's probably going to start more than eight. He's probably going to start like eight to 10 games for us um, based on his scores <clears throat> throughout the year. So, um, man, our receivers are dirty. Tyreek Hill, Juju Smith-Schuster, DK Metcalf, Michael Gallup. Uh, Marvin Jones Jr. and Mecole Hardman. So I'm, I'm pretty stoked there. We got six really good wide receivers. Uh, we're getting down here to the bottom end of the draft. We have 
Uh, looks like six more picks to make. I would like to grab another. I mean, we have to grab at least one more quarterback and one more tight end. Uh, we should probably grab multiple at each position. So if that's four more positions, we probably need uh, a couple more running backs and a couple more. Hmm, I don't know. I think I think receiver is good. One, I think we're pretty good there. We got six really solid guys. Um, so if I'm looking at late round running backs from a best ball perspective, uh, I'm into these rookies down here. Um, I didn't see them get taken yet, did I? Nope. Um, so Zach Moss in Buffalo, he's going to lead the team in rushing touchdowns. And A.J. Dillon, he's, he's technically an Aaron Jones handcuff, so that's going to make me feel better if anything happens to Jones or if he misses time. Um, but a guy like a guy like A.J. Dillon, he in Boston, look at his Boston College stats. Um, here, let's pull them up. AJ Dillon. So you see here, his rookie year, 300 carries, sophomore year, 227, and his final junior year was 318. Uh, the guy runs at a, for a big dude, he's running at almost, five, he has 5.2 yards per carry throughout his career. And then when you th think about this, nobody faced more eight man boxes, loaded boxes than AJ Dillon in college football last year. And he's running at 5.3 yards a clip. I mean, he got 13 receptions, 195 yards. That's 15 yards per catch. This guy is tough to bring down. He is – a lot of people hate this Packers draft, but A.J. Dillon is the prize. Uh, I know a lot of people wanted a receiver for Aaron Rodgers in that offense, but uh, in my opinion, the best thing for Aaron Rodgers is to have a scary, wicked, good running back game, uh, running back field. So they already got that with Aaron Jones but now they're going to add some thunder to that lightning. I know Jamal Williams is a sound blocker, a good pass catcher, but he can't run like, like A.J. Dillon can. So A.J. Dillon is one of those guys that you have to keep an eye on this summer. I think he's going to be really impressive. Um, he's, he's built and ready to go for a large, a large amount of carries, and maybe even next year is the year that they let Aaron Jones uh, walk. I hope not because I love Aaron Jones. I'm from Green Bay, Wisconsin. I live in Milwaukee. Uh, so I would hate to see Aaron Jones leave. Ideally, we have an Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon split. But that's enough about A.J. Dillon. Um, I like these rookie running backs, though. These are guys that could lead, you know, with five or six touchdowns uh, in the rushing category. I mean, but I, I mean, there's still guys like Boston Scott and Naheem Hines, and these are definitely good picks at the best ball uh, running back position. Um, so, yeah, we're just looking here. Like Cam Newton, I hope he gets signed soon, but – uh, we just saw, it looks like Ben Roethlisberger just got picked. Um, but I'm still, oh, he's still available. So a guy like Ben Roethlisberger, um, even Sam Darnold, uh, Drew Locke, Gardner Minshew, Philip Rivers, Derek Carr. There's just so many quarterbacks, guys. Please wait. If you want to take a quarterback early, that's fine. But just wait to take your second and third quarterback, in a, in a, especially in a super flex league. I think you can wait for a while. But I get it, though. If you get the opportunity to take, uh, like a Dak Prescott and a, and a Patrick Mahomes, that's like a scary, that's a scary thought to have to play every weekend. Um, so it looks like I missed out on Zach Moss. That's unfortunate. Uh, Chase Edmonds, it looks like Ryan Tannehill, Sammy Watkins, Jamal Williams. Uh, I'm probably going to be loading up a quarterback here. If I can get Ben Roethlisberger, that would be my pick. And then we'll just take a guy that feels a little bit more safe and secure. Um, but yeah, we're looking uh, – I'm feeling like I got a good squad here, led by Aaron Jones, Melvin Gordon at running back, Tariq Cohen kind of popping in and out of the lineup for <clears throat> PPR uh, RB2 flex numbers, and then Alexander Madison. If Dalvin Cook is out, ooh, we got something, guys. We got something. So um, the quarterbacks are starting to go, it looks like. Uh, I mean, I'm interested in a guy like Phillip Rivers, Derek Carr. These are all good players. Uh, if I look quick at tight ends, man, the tight ends are getting beat up. Tight ends are getting beat up. Uh, Ian Thomas in Carolina. That might be the guy here. Uh, otherwise, Eric Ebron. Let me check and look to see how my, uh, my tight end rankings ended up going. So in a PPR league, uh, I've got Eric Ebron here. Tight end 20. He's probably the best available at the moment. Um, and Eric, I mean, you think about Eric Ebron, he, didn't he lead the tight ends in touchdowns a couple years ago? And that was with, I mean, it was with Andrew Luck, 
Um, and he played with Jacoby Brissett last year, but they just didn't use him the same. So I'm hoping Pittsburgh can kind of figure it out and, and get get Eric Ebron involved in the in the red zone. That's where he uh, he thrives. So hopefully they can figure that out and get him more consistent. Um, but yeah, man, we're just looking around here. I think I might take a snag at running backs. Um, Boston Scott, man, he had some good games last year. AJ Dillon, he had some good, he's got some good potential. We're going to take a guy in Boston Scott and that will, we're looking at, um, we're looking at waiting on quarterback and tight end until our final picks, you guys. Uh, so I don't, I totally do not mind doing this. Um, it's probably going to be my preferred method in a lot of these videos going forward. Uh, I know a lot of people are going to say my tight end's really weak. Um, but I mean, just on the projections alone, I gave Blake Jarwin, uh, I was trying to be modest with Blake Jarwin, but he ended up as my tight end nine. So it looks like we got sniped on Eric Ebron. That's unfortunate. If I look quick at the other tight ends that I like, uh, maybe we'll take a guy in Ian Thomas, Chase Sternberger, Greg Wilson. Uh, I mean, there's enough here where I think I can get something to work. So we're going to go ahead here and take Ian Thomas. If we look at what Ian Thomas did last year, and keep in mind, he's been kind of held up by, by Greg Olson the last few years. But when Olson has been gone down, and he has, uh, Thomas has been reliable uh, re reliable enough here. So uh, last year, he only had the one good game of <clears throat> uh, 10 targets with five receptions, 57 yards, and a touchdown. Uh, but the year before that, when Greg Olson got hurt at the end of the year, we see Ian Thomas, you know, he got some volume here and he got some touchdowns. So uh, the job is all his this year. And uh, that offense with Matt Rule and Joe Brady, they're going to be throwing the ball a lot. They got Teddy Bridgewater. They got a lot of receiving weapons, Christian McCaffrey. Uh, that just seems like a team that's going to – their defense is going to be bad, so they're going to be in a lot of uh, bad situations. They're in the NFC South, which has the Saints, the Falcons, and the Bucks. Like, those are going to be three, three, like, probably top ten offenses in football this year. So um, the, the, the Panthers are going to have to play keep up. So I'm okay with taking Ian Thomas here. Um, but yeah, we're getting down to the nitty gritty here. We got two tight ends now. We're looking at five running backs. It looks like six wide receivers. And I'm really not sure what else I want to do here. Uh, I didn't get to talk much about Boston Scott at all. We kind of breezed past that. Um, so let's just look at Boston Scott and talk about his situation. Now, he is he's currently slated as the RB2 in Philly. And Doug Peterson over there has been notorious for his running back by committee approach. Uh, but if we look here, they only got Miles Sanders, Boston Scott, and Corey Clement like locked into the depth chart, which is kind of crazy. They haven't signed a big back free agent yet. Someone like Devonta Freeman or Lamar Miller uh, come to mind. But with Boston Scott, you're getting a pass catching back. That's basically, he's like, he's Darren Sproles-esque. Um, if you look at what he did here in the passing game down, the, this is with Miles Sanders playing in games too. I think I think they rested Sanders in this game here, week 17. But you're looking at six, seven, six, four receptions. You're looking at a lot of yards through the air, and they even gave him the three touchdowns on the goal line, uh, week 17 last year. So uh, if anything happens to Miles Sanders, they're going to have a hard time not giving Boston Scott uh, a good amount of work. So he's definitely a guy that I'm interested in. Uh, is even in I think in redraft league and dynasty leagues I like Boston Scott a lot because um, Miles Sanders is an interesting guy we don't know if they're going to give him <clears throat> uh, as many touches as they did like he's probably going to get the same amount of touches as last year but with Jordan Howard gone <clears throat> we don't know if if Sanders is going to get all of Howard's touches or if they're going to divide those into Sanders and Scott and another running back so uh, I like Scott's potential there but yeah, we're working on uh, the 15th round here. And we're almost up to pick. I might take a break in a little second here before we finish this off. But we're seeing uh, John Kelly, Naheem Hines, Corey Davis, OJ Howard, Justice Hill. Uh, and then meanwhile, I still got a lot of quarterbacks here. I mean, Jimmy Garoppolo, whatever, Sam Darnold, whatever, Fitzgerald, Drew Locke, Gardner Minshew, Derek Carr, Philip Rivers. Uh, let's just take a quick look at my quarterback rankings and see who the highest guy is because that's who we're going to take. Uh, dang, it's it's Gardner Minshew followed by Derek Carr and Phillip Rivers. You see Darnold, Cousins, Garoppolo, Locke. So all these guys are down here. But uh, I think we're going to go ahead and take 
I think I'm going to take Philip Rivers over Gardner Minshew. Um, just because I'm a little bit more excited about the Colts offense than the Jacksonville Jaguars offense. Uh, but if I can, if I can snag another guy here, if I can snag my two quarterbacks here, it would, it would be Phillip Rivers and Gardner Minshew. And that should be enough with Matt Stafford. I mean, I realistically could just take one, but Stafford, Stafford hasn't been, he missed a good amount of games last year. So um, we're going to go ahead here and take Phillip Rivers in the best ball league with T.Y. Hilton and the rookie Michael Pittman Jr. Uh, Jack Doyle, the really good running game. I mean, Zach Pascal, Paris Campbell, there's a lot to like here um, for Phillip Rivers. So uh, we might even just take a tight end here real quick. Um, a guy like Greg Olson, Will Disley, Gerald Everett, Dawson Knox. Let's take a look at Dawson Knox real quick. Dawson Knox over in Buffalo. He's a second-year tight end. Uh, Dawson Knox was – he was tight end number 32 last year. And if we see here, he only had two games over double digits, um, which, I mean, at that point, he's going to probably start maybe three, four, five games for us this year uh, if, you, if you project him to be a little bit better. But, I mean, at this point, we got our two quarterbacks. We got our two tight ends. We're going to take a look here and just browse and see if – oh, we got to grab A.J. Dillon here. Uh, so that's going to be the pick here. I think hopefully this guy doesn't snipe me from it. We see Gardner Minshew go. Uh, I mean, I'm totally okay with, with snagging one more quarterback. I think Rivers and Stafford are – they've had healthy enough careers where I'm not too worried about Stafford uh, missing more games this year. It was actually beneficial for Stafford, I think, long-term to miss because, I mean, the rumor was that Stafford played hurt for a while. And the fact that uh, he got eight games to rest up and finish the season, that's a good sign. Uh, dang, we got sniped. A.J. Dillon, dang, snipage. Okay, that one hurts. Uh, that one hurts. So no running back for us, which, oh, man, that's fun. Okay, it is what it is. We're going to take a quick look here at wide receiver. Uh, nobody's really sticking out here. I like LaVisca. Um, Steven Sims here, he's a guy that we can keep an eye on. Uh, we're just going to go ahead in here and take our quarterback. Um, I'm going to take Derek Carr, and I will touch back on Derek Carr in a little sec. So I was talking about Derek Carr. And if you're not excited about the Oakland Raiders offense, <laughs> the, the Las Vegas Raiders, that's going to take some uh, getting used to. But if we look clear, quick here at the, the quarterback rankings from last year, we see Derek Carr, quarterback 14 last year. And tell me who his receivers were. I mean, Darren, uh, Darren Waller, of course. But you're, you're talking about Tyrell Williams and Hunter Renfro. That's about it. So Derek Carr, super reliable here. He's only missed one, two games in his career. Um, he had a pretty good season last year, over 4,000 yards, a career high, 4,054. Um, only eight interceptions, 21 touchdowns. Um, I mean, you look at some of these numbers here, that's fine if he's going to be my third quarterback. Um, but the thing with Derek Carr and the Las Vegas Raiders is their offense got so much better. Josh Jacobs, year two. Darren Waller's back. Tyrell Williams is now their third or fourth receiver. They're going to be throwing to Henry Rubbs, Brian Edwards, Hunter Renfro, Tyrell Williams, Darren Waller, Jalen Richard. They got Lynn Bowden, Jr. So tons of options for them to throw the ball to. And if Derek Carr was quarterback 14 last year, uh, I don't see how he is not going to be better this year with the weapons that they have. The team is better as a whole. The offensive line's been good. Uh, the defense is going to get a lot better. Um, so I, I think Derek Carr is a hell of a pick at this point in the draft. Um, looking around here, uh, Damian Harris, Raquel Armstead are the running backs. Receivers are D.D. Westbrook, Brandon Ayuk, Denzel Mims. Mims is a good, interesting spot for a best ball receiver here. Uh, he's a he's a contested catch guy. He's gonna he reminds me of Brandon Marshall on film. He's kind of exciting and electric that way. He makes like some of the most amazing catches you can see. Uh, but there we go. We see Irv Smith go. I was talking about him earlier. Irv Smith round 16. So we're in the final two rounds of this best ball. I thank you so much for sticking around. If you're still here, uh, let me know in the comments if you made it this far. I appreciate it. Uh, I'm trying to grow this channel. I'm hoping to help some people and, and just continue to grow this channel and uh, uh, just be a part of the fantasy football community here. So uh, I love doing this. I'm not going to stop doing it. So uh, might as well hit the like button, the comments, and uh, go ahead and subscribe. So 
Uh, I've also, I mean, I'm doing this on YouTube. I don't think I'm going to upload this to my podcasting sites, um, but I do run the podcast, the, the Fantasy Fellow Show. That's on Google uh, Podcasts, on Apple. It's on Spotify. It's on Breaker and a couple other major podcasts. But um, if you're a podcast person and you can't watch or, or check out the YouTube, uh, go ahead and download us on, on any of those podcast platforms. Um, so Randall Cobb, that was a good pick there. I was looking into him. Um, but are we set here with our positions? If I look quick here, let's move that up. Our starting, and that doesn't really help. I kind of was hoping for a starting lineup look. Um, but anyways, our quarterback room is Matt Stafford, Philip Rivers, Derek Carr. That passes the test. Our running backs are Aaron Jones, Melvin Gordon, Tariq Cohen, Alexander Madison, and Boston Scott. That feels like we could use one more guy there. Uh, wide receiver room, Tyree Kill, who's a wide receiver one. Juju Smith-Schuster, who's a wide receiver one, if if Ben plays all year, which I think he could. Uh, DK Metcalf coming in for the touchdown. Michael Gallup, M Marvin Jones. I mean, at the moment here, I have five guys that are going to finish in the top 25, in my opinion. Uh, maybe Michael Gallup's a top 30. Uh, but all these guys have tremendous upside. And then Miko Hardman, I'm just getting purely for the touchdown bombs with Pat Mahomes. Um, so I'm super excited there. Uh, if we look quick here, if I wanted to wait at quarterback, there's still guys like Nick Foles, Tua Tagovailoa, Jarrett Stidham, Tyrod Taylor. So it looks like we hit the we hit the good spot to pull the quarterbacks. We would have been stuck with one of these guys, which, uh, like I said, I, I'm into Derek Carr. We see where Phillip Rivers was last year. Philip Rivers QB 18, uh, but if, if you do this and you filter by uh, fantasy points per game, look at where Matt Stafford was, QB 3. Uh, so that's a value. That's a big value. And I mentioned Marvin Jones, who without Stafford for half the year, wide receiver 28 people, Marvin Jones. Comment Marvin Jones if you're in the Marvin Jones train because uh, I'm probably driving. So um, we're coming up here. On our 17th pick, we're just going to filter. We should probably grab another tight end. Um, I mentioned Nick Boyle as being a guy that caught my attention. There's really not any other tight ends. Did Jay Sternberger get picked? I thought I saw him. So, yeah, Jay Stern, Sternberger got picked. And Kyle Rudolph with, with no Stefan Diggs. I don't know where Kyle Rudolph finished up in my rankings. I have him and Irv Smith as, as you know, fringe tight end twos, but a guy like Dawson Knox, is Chris Herndon still available? Um, Herndon, yeah, Chris Herndon went uh, significantly earlier. Uh, any other tight ends that I might be able to grab here? I mean, Dawson Knox, Will Disley, Greg Olson, and then Kyle Rudolph. Uh, we might wait on that. I, if anything, I think let's take our last running back shot here. Um, I'm just looking around here to see if anybody excites me. I like Mike Boone. If, if Dalvin Cook holds out, that's a guy that's going to get uh, some touches behind Alexander Madison. But really, man, these running backs are not looking – it looks like we're kind of out of running backs. Um, maybe Carlos Hyde is our guy here. Maybe Carlos Hyde is our guy because, because I don't think Rashad Penny is going to be ready. He's at least going to be on the pup list. And a guy like Chris Carson, I love Chris Carson, but he's had some nagging injuries the last couple of years. Um, he had the hip last year, 14, 15 games. And, I mean, I just think a guy like, like Carlos Hyde, they're going to try to get him the ball. So uh, I'm totally okay with taking a guy like Carlos Hyde. You see last year he rushed for 1,000 yards, six touchdowns. Um, Carlos Hyde is rehabbing. Uh, a shoulder injury, but he expects to be ready for week one. So I'm not too worried about that. We're going to go ahead here and take Carlos Hyde. And he's more of a handcuff for Chris Carson. But, I mean, if we look at what Seattle did last year with Chris Carson, I don't know if this is sustainable. They gave him a lot of touches. He had a hip injury last year. Um, so maybe that we see them start to kind of work in uh, Carlos Hyde as, as a guy there. And I think Carlos Hyde's got some goal line value too. So maybe he scores three or four touchdowns and he starts for me that week. Um, but yeah, he's really more of a, I don't have him very high in my projections, uh, but at that point, I'm kind of just nitpicking. I mean, I could have kept taking receivers there, but at this point, I mean, I got six receivers that I feel really good about, and I can only start, I can technically start four of them, um, but those guys are going to be 
uh, locked and loaded at the positions there. So we're going to probably walk off here with a tight end. Uh, my guy, Nick Boyle, I think that's the guy. And if you watch the, the PPR mock, uh, mock draft video, you'll know how high I was on Nick Boyle. Uh, but he was uh, tight end number 36. And Hayden Hurst is gone from the, from the team who had 39 targets. Uh, but Nick Boyle still caught 31 balls for 43 uh, targets, two touchdowns. This is, this is seriously going to be my pick, Nick Boyle, uh, over Kyle Rudolph. And the reason why is because this is a handcuff pick uh, to Mark Andrews, who missed a few games last year. But uh, if you look at Mark Andrews, he missed the one, I guess he only missed one game. Um, but uh, I remember him being kind of in and out of a couple games. But the thing about Nick Boyle is he doesn't leave the field. He's their best blocking uh, tight end. So you see last year he did get two games over double digits. He's not going to be a guy that's going to get a lot of volume. But I can guarantee you he's probably getting a career high in targets this year. It's probably going to be in the 50 to 60 range. Um, and I mean, at this point, he's basically just a backup tight end where if Mark Andrews goes down. I got the tight end one in Baltimore, who Lamar Jackson, he absolutely loves. Now, I could have taken another receiver here, but because we waited so late on tight ends, I thought securing maybe another four or five uh, double digit games out of Nick Boyle might be worth it. Um, but if we look at NFL snap counts, so I just Googled NFL snap counts and we're at, we're at lineups.com here. I'm going to filter by tight end and we're going to see, we're going to look here and see percentage of snaps, team snaps. Um, so you're seeing Travis Kelsey, of course, he didn't come off the field. Let me move this. 92% uh, snaps for Kelsey. But if you go down a little bit here, Nick Boyle is chilling as maybe a top 10 tight end. Um, so he outsnapped Mark Andrews last year. So he doesn't come off the field. So I like him to be a guy that just kind of hangs around. But I've talked about Nick Boyle too much. Uh, again, this is just a website that I use uh, called Lineups. Uh, you can go ahead and look at all the snaps in the team percentages and the totals here. Um, but yeah, Nick Boyle's on the field a lot. So I, I was kind of interested in him. Um, and actually, if you filter this by total snaps, Nick Boyle, as far as tight ends, he was the guy that was on the field the second most. Only Travis Kelsey was on the field more than him. So um, <clears throat> he's a guy that I'm going to keep talking about until people tell me to stop. So uh, Nick Boyle, my last tight end. And yeah, that's going to conclude our draft. I think I'm going to put, um, I might try to get a screenshot or put a, a picture here of the whole draft board at the end of the, the video. Uh, but we'll just recap our quarterbacks, Matt Stafford, Phillip Rivers, and Derek Carr. Our running back room looks like uh, Aaron Jones, Melvin Gordon, Tariq Cohen, Alexander Madison, Boston Scott, and Carlos Hyde. Our receiver room looks like Tyreek Hill, Juju Smith-Schuster, DK Metcalf, Michael Gallup, Marvin Jones, and Miko Hardman. That's only six receivers, but I feel really, really good about all these guys. And then our tight ends, uh, Blake Jarwin, who I have as a sleeper top 10 tight end. And then I have um, Ian Thomas, who's got, he's got tight end one upside for some people. And then Nick Boyle, who's just like this, this punt at tight end. But he's on the field so much that it might be crazy. Maybe he catches four or five touchdowns this year and he starts for me. But, um, but yeah, that's going to do it. Thank you so much for watching and checking out the video. Um, I'm going to be doing this all the rest of the summer. So if you, if you want to do a mock draft with me or you want to do, uh, if you want to use drafters and do a best ball with me, let me know. We can get in touch. Uh, the best way to do that would be to DM me on Twitter at the fellow KGB. Um, but yeah, don't forget we use drafters.com. Uh, use my promo code, the fellow KGB. And uh, yeah, we'll see you in another video. Thanks for, thank you so much for watching. Peace.